question for Dr. Henry, I guess. What's the latest data on um, on uh, transmission in schools uh, in British Columbia? What can you tell us about that? Um, in terms of uh, the numbers of people, um, we gave an update a, a few weeks ago. Uh, we have had uh, a, a number of exposure events, but uh, only one cluster that I'm aware of since then. So that's a small amount of transmission uh, between a small number of students. As you know, we had a, a potential a, or an exposure event where somebody um, had a variant of concern in a high school, and uh, all of the people in the uh, cohort of that uh, in that cohort were tested and none of them um, tested positive. Uh, I will say we did both the rapid tests and the PCR tests to be sure, the PCR being more accurate. We did have one false positive on the rapid test, but it was repeatedly negative on the, the more accurate PCR testing. So we are confident that that again tells us um, that the risk of transmission with the measures we have in place in our classrooms is very low. With the data, Dr. Henry, you said that we've seen it recently, but I don't think that we have outside of Garibaldi, and why can't we see it that specifically all the time? It seemed very clear there to show this many were tested, this many came back negative. Um, and also, I'm just wondering about with remote learning, is there going to be no further uh, direction for any of the schools as far as remote learning or PPE or what they need to spend their money on? I'm just wondering why no direction to them. Uh, maybe, um, Lisa, I can just address the, the, the last uh, part of your question first. We um, have, uh, will be releasing the, the, the second allocation of the federal funding uh, Im imminently. And we have been, in fact, working with our provincial partners at our provincial steering committee over the last few weeks around where that money can best, uh, best be allocated. We know that, uh, that, that a portion of it certainly will go to continue to, uh, to pay for the, ad the additional staff that districts hired, the um, hundreds of additional custodians custodians, additional um, teacher psychologists, the additional counselors, the many staff that are uh, more uh, educational assistants uh, supporting um, students with, uh, uh, with, with special needs. So we, we, we know that we need to, to continue to, um, to support those investments, but also on many other aspects of the plan, whether it is personal protective equipment, uh, you know, there's more work to do on, uh, on other areas around ventilation and barriers, and we are working with our partners on our, on our steering committee and will support districts to, um, to, uh, to, to, to make those investments. So there, there has been direction, but it's been a collaborative process because we've asked the folks who are closest to uh, and working in our schools what, what is it that they, what it is, is it that they, that they need. Um, and now I've sort of, I've forgotten the first part of your question. It was around data. It was around data, which I will pass to you. <laughs> So as you know, the, uh, the data on exposures, on clusters and outbreaks is posted on uh, the health authority websites on an ongoing basis and also on the BCCDC website. And we routinely repost information about uh, school age and uh, the number of cases in school age children. And we'll be presenting some more information on that tomorrow morning.